education is better than fame. My purpose for this passage is to warn others about the too cool for school mentality. Too often I hear conversations that downplays education. So I ask myself, why do people underestimate the value of learning? It took me some time to realize how important this topic is because without education, we deprive our future. Distractions like seeking attention and dealing with drama all attributes to the too cool for school mentality. Many people choose that mindset in order to gain recognition and for the approval of others. Had I chose to educate myself, my circumstances would be much different. I would not be here in prison warning you all about the risk behind being too cool for school. With that being said, allow me to give you a background on who I am so that you understand my purpose on attacking the too cool for school mentality. In my hometown, Compton, I was a very popular child growing up. People knew me as an up and coming star because of my talent in sports, even celebrities like Snoop Dogg supported my talent. In 2005, I was 12 years old. When I, in 2005, I was 12 years old when Snoop took his all-star football team to Miami to compete against Luke's Liberty All-Star team. Uncle Luke was famous for the old classic song, Do the Brown. After a long flight to Miami, I noticed a huge culture difference, especially in regards to their taste in fashion. It seems like seven out of 10 people had real gold teeth, the kind that does not come out. There was even a five-year-old Haitian boy with long, thick dreadlocks. His dreadlocks were so thick, only eight to 10 dreads were able to fit on his small head. On top of that, he also had permanent gold teeth in his mouth. I was shocked to see so many people with permanent gold teeth because in California, one out of 10,000 people has those implanted teeth. I was amazed by Miami's inner city culture. When my team had the opportunity to meet Luke's, Scott, Luke's team, it was like the ghetto kids of LA versus the ghetto kids of Miami. My team was greeted with their Southern hospitality. We ate barbecue ribs and hot links as we dialogued and learned about each other. My favorite memory was when a young man from the other team approached my circle of friends and yelled with this down south country slang. Y'all Cali boys don't wear jewelry, he said, while showing off his two necklaces around his neck. One necklace was rose gold, while the other was plain gold. Each of them was filled with diamonds. I automatically assumed his jewelry was fake because that rose gold chain and his watch was not convincing because of his off reddish shade. Plus, he was no older than 12. My response was bitter because I doubted the authenticity of his jewelry. But based on the look of assurance on the crowd's face, along with the confirmation of wannabe gold experts, I could tell his jewelry was real. In addition to the event, the energy of the crowd grew. Once a professional camera crew came, to interview players from each all-star team. The camera crew asked questions like, what's our name and what positions do we play? But once the interview began to ask us about our grades, the energy disappeared and you could feel the discomfort settle in as we, as we tried to dodge the questions about school. It seemed like we were in cahoots about devaluing education our mentality resembled the traditional too cool for school mentality. Despite it being many miles between California and Miami, one thing both teams had in common was our perception on education. We were all inner city kids with unlimited talent. But once we made the decision to downplay education, we opened doors for the consequences behind refusing to learn like the increase in probability of a person resorting to crime, which showed in the All-Star game because five plays within the first quarter, a huge team fight ignited. 
Both teams, including coaches, was out there fighting. We were all behaving the way our culture raised us. As a result, the rest of the game was canceled, and we were pretty much ran out of Miami. Two years later, I was a sophomore at Dominguez High School in Compton, California, the same high school as the NFL superstar Richard Sherman, the cornerback for the San Francisco 49ers. I had the opportunity to meet Sherman a few times, but the conversation I had with his pops impacted my life the most because our conversation triggered my passion for education. We had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about the importance of education. I remember sitting outside of the locker room on a medical bed waiting for a teammate to spat tape my cleats. When a man out of nowhere approached me, I noticed his tan and green work uniform with Compton's garbage truck company logo stitched on the front of his button-up shirt. I also realized he knew a little bit about me through conversations with my coach. I can still picture his serious demeanor as he warned me about the importance of school. At first, I failed to understand his intention behind helping me prepare for our game. It was until I read the name on his shirt. His name on his tag seemed familiar because it read Sherman. From that moment on, I immediately knew he was Richard Sherman's dad. But just to make sure, I asked myself, I asked for myself, are you Richard Sherman's dad? I asked. Right as the words left my mouth, he was finished fat taping my cleats, and a pack of coaches began approaching us. He answered by nodding his head yes, then walked off with the rest of the coaches. That moment will always be with me because Richard Sherman was a legend in Compton, not just because of his talent, but because of his 4.0 GPA. Richard Sherman had the utmost respect across the city for being intelligent and gifted in the classroom. And now he is worth over $50 million. The warning from his father was over my head because I failed to listen and apply the things he taught. Instead, I chose to go my own way, and as a result, I, I ended up with literally all else that year. I also became a living statistic because I have failed to do well in school. Study shows how people with low grades are more likely to be incarcerated than people who do well and thrive in school. My situation confirms those studies because shortly after my conversation with Sherman's dad, I was arrested for attempted murder. I was only 16 years old, and I was eventually sentenced to 35 years to life. But thankfully, four years into my bid, the laws changed and opened doors for people convicted of a crime as a juvenile. The new laws gives me a second chance at freedom, but first I must serve my base term, which in my case is 15 years. For that reason, I need others to learn from my mistakes and ditch the too cool for school mentality because without an education, you increase your chances of resorting to crime. And as a result, your chances of being incarcerated increases drastically.